Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Hack the Box series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Knife. Uh, now, Knife was recently retired uh, just a few days ago, and a lot of you have been asking me to cover, you know, recently retired boxes. Uh, this was fairly simple. I actually completed it before it was retired, and um, um, so this is a Linux box. And uh, again, it's not the best that I've come across, but in terms of initial exploitation, but again, uh, the thing I like about it is it does not uh, utilize or it doesn't have any CTF like, um, you know, uh, exploitation challenges set up. So again, if you're really keen on your enumeration, exploiting or gaining access to this uh, box should be fairly simple. Um, right. So let's take a look at the Nmap results here. So I'm going to be using the Nmap results that I had uh, from my from the time when I initially uh, went through this box. So Nmap all. Um, you can take a look at the results, uh, sorry, my Nmap scan options right over here. They're fairly simple, um, and you can see I scanned all TCP ports. Uh, of course, the IP is different because uh, it changed. Um, and of course, we have the SSH. Uh, in regards to the services, we have SSH running on port 22. As for the service version, it's OpenSSH 8.2p1. And we get the, op the distribution banner, which tells us it's running Ubuntu. So there are no vulnerabilities. Uh, that uh, you can find for this version of OpenSSH. You then have a web server running on port 80, and that's running Apache HTTP 2.4.41. Again, same thing, nothing vulnerable there. And uh, again, the distribution or operating system banner is displayed there. As for the web application, you can see that the Nmap script HTTP title tells us that it's uh, the title is Emergent Medical Idea. So if we open up the web server here, let me just do that right now. So paste and go. Uh, you can see that it's a fairly simple um, HTML template, as, at least that's what I think it is. And of course, trying to access, um, ro you know, the robots.txt file here doesn't give us anything. But again, we get the operating system banner and it, you know, essentially displays the information for us there. Um, analyzing the source doesn't reveal much. Um, we can see that uh, it has uh, pretty much has internal CSS styling. Uh, and a bit of inla uh, inline styling. We also have some JavaScript, but the JavaScript here uh, primarily uh, is to do with this particular terminal effect, which I'm quite familiar with. Um, so again, the next logical step now, because if we analyze the Nmap scan, we can see we don't have any other ports open. Uh, none of these two services here are vulnerable to any uh, exploits, uh, vulnerable inherently to any exploits. So it's obvious that the target is the web application. Now, the web application looks fairly simple. So the next logical step in terms of web enumeration that you'll, you'll most likely take is, of course, to run a uh, directory brute forcing or fuzzing uh, to you know try and determine or to find files and directories that could give us an idea of what we need to do. Uh, but one step that a lot of people actually miss out is enumerating the technologies that are running on the website or on the web server. So when I talk about the technologies, you can see that we are dealing with a Linux box here and we know it's running Ubuntu and it has a web server and that's running Apache. So that gives us an idea of what the stack of what stack is being used. So we know it's a Linux, Apache, uh, no MySQL, but that's primarily because the application doesn't need it and PHP. So uh, let's try and enumerate a little bit more information about the, uh, you know, this particular stack. Um, so to do this, we can use WhatWeb. All right, so WhatWeb is fairly simple to use. Let me just copy the IP here. I can actually just copy the entire URL there. Um, we can just say WhatWeb and paste in the URL there, and that'll tell us a, or provide us with a list of technologies and their versions uh, you know, that's actually running on the, on the web server. So we can see it's running Apache 2.4.41. We get that HTML5. Uh, the IP, and we have something very interesting here. We have PHP 8.1.0 uh, dev. Hmm, that's interesting. And again, we also get the X powered by um, the X powered by flag here uh, that again points towards PHP 8.1.0 dev. What if we use Nikto? Let's try Nikto, right? Uh, will that provide us with the same information? Uh, it does. It actually tells us right over here that it's running PHP 8.1.0 dev. So that's interesting. So what if we actually search for, you know, PHP 8.1.0, um, you know, exploit? Let's let's see what we can find. Um, hmm, looks like we have an interesting exploit here and a GitHub repository. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's see what this exploit does. 
and um, we can see it's for the exact version 8.1.0 dev user agent remote code execution all right so uh, we can see that uh, it's been tested on ubuntu 20.04 and the version 8.1.0 dev uh, it provides us with the references there and a readme file which looks like uh, it is in chinese but hey um, so it looks like uh, they provides us with a download link for the backdoor, but we'll get into that uh, right now. So an early release of PHP, the PHP 8.1.0 dev version was released with a backdoor on March 28th, 2021. So this is fairly recent. The backdoor was quickly discovered and removed. If this version of PHP runs on a server, the following exploit code uh, uses the backdoor to provide a pseudo shell on the host all right so this will provide us with a pseudo shell if we take a look at the github repository here which is ex uh, which is what i used to actually get a reverse shell um you can see um it gives you a bit of uh, information regarding the backdoor uh, which again php thankfully provided uh, to us um, and of course this gives you an idea of how this works uh, but uh, this particular code, uh, there, there are two Python scripts here. One of them is uh, the reverse shell and the backdoor. So the reverse shell will give you a, a reverse shell, uh, if I can actually say that. So you can see here reverse shell uh, and using it is fairly simple. We uh, essentially launch it with Python 3, provide the target URL, the attacker or your Kali IP and your Kali uh, port that you're currently listening on because it's again going to provide us with the reverse shell. Um, so what we can do is we can actually just get this particular a reverse shell, a Python script. So raw, I'm just going to get it here and uh, we will save it. Uh, let me just terminate that, clear that out. So uh, let's save it here and um, paste that in there. And then I'm going to set up a netcat listener. So NVLP uh, 1234, let's set up on port 1234. Uh, let me also get my VPN IP. Uh, we can see that that's it right over here, right? Um, yeah, okay, so that's fine. Uh, let me also copy the, uh, hmm, let's copy the IP there. As for the usability, as it says right over here, we provide, uh, we run the script uh, with Python 3. We then provide the, um, the target URL, the attack IP and the attacker port. All right, so we're going to say Python, um, Python 3, provide the name of the script reverse shell uh, php dev.py and then we provide the actual url which uh, again over here we'll just provide as http there we are and uh, we then need to provide the our kali ip 10 10 uh, 14.107 and the port 1234 and we hit enter and immediately we get a reverse shell right over here and we're logged in as the user James at knife. All right, so uh, if we head over into our working directory, into our home directory for the user James, you can see we get the user flag. So uh, user.txt, we get it there. Um, if we list out all the files in the home directory, we can see that bash history uh, actually goes into dev null. So that means it's being cleared or it's not being saved. Um, and we have a few other files here. All right, so we've obtained initial access. If we, you know, again, uh, try and enumerate information regarding the actual uh, operating system or the distribution version, we can see it's Ubuntu 20.04.2 LTS. Uh, you name A, we get the kernel version, which is 5.4.0. Again, we're not performing kernel exploitation. We're going to take a, a look at uh, another technique, which I'll get to shortly. Uh, if we list out the users on the system, so Etsy password, uh, we can see that we have a you know user for uh, PostgreSQL. Um, we also have a few others like, uh, well, let's see, let's see. We have the root user, of course, we know that, and a few others, but uh, we pretty much have access through a user called James. All right, so the next step is going to, you know, deal with enumeration. And I've uh, pretty much talked of a few tools that you can use um, whenever you want to perform enumeration, uh, like, for example, a Linpeas or the Linux Exploit Suggester. But those are primarily for, uh, or, you know, in particular, the Linux Exploit Suggester is for exploits, uh, you know, primarily kernel exploits, but not limited to that. Uh, in this video, I want to take you through another tool called LinEnum, which uh, again, you should be familiar with. So uh, if I just open this up here, there we are. That's the first link there. 
we can see that uh, this is simply an enumeration tool for um, for Linux systems, and uh, it essentially displays the following information. So user information, privileged access, uh, providers or display, uh, you know, or providers with good breakout binaries uh, available via sudo. And uh, yeah, so let, let's actually take a look at how to use this. So again, you can clone, you can actually just get these, uh, the shell script and then transfer it over to your target. I already have it on my system. Um, so that's being stored in uh, my, on my desktop here under Linux enum. And I'll just serve this directory. So when I say serve, I'm simply using the Python module, simple HTTP server to set up a local web server in this particular directory to host the file. So again, you can see I have a lin enum.sh there. So I'm just gonna say serve, provide my password here. And we'll go into the temp directory and if we list all the files in here, looks like we have a few files, uh, but nothing else, nothing interesting or nothing useful if I can say that. Um, right, so we can then use wget and then prov provide the Kali IP here. So 10.10.14.107. 10, uh, and uh, we're getting lin enum.sh, right? We hit enter where we get that successfully and we can then terminate or uh, shut down the web server there. We can then use chmod plus x lin uh, enum.sh, uh, make it ex executable and then execute it. So lin enum.sh. So I'm just going to let this complete or go through the enumeration process. So once it's done, I'll get back to you and then we can start identifying vulnerabilities that we can use to elevate our privileges. All right, so lin enum has completed enumerating information and uh, we can take a look at the results here. Um, right from the top, you can see we get the system information, the kernel information, and uh, we also get the distribution release information, as well as the host name, the current user, uh, the current user ID, the group ID, uh, users that have previously logged on to the system, uh, who else is currently logged on, so on and so forth, and then the group memberships. And uh, we also get uh, the contents of the Etsy password file, which we did manually. And uh, we also discover something interesting here. So it says we can sudo without supplying a password. And then, it, so you might be saying, well, what does that mean? Yeah, it says uh, matching default entries for James on knife. Uh, and it provides us here with uh, the actual environment variables. And then it says user James may run the following commands on knife. So we can essentially run a knife without providing a password. So we can say sudo uh, user bin knife or just knife. Uh, but uh, what exactly does knife do? Hmm. Well, let's actually try that out. So if we, you know, because our environment variable has been configured correctly. So if we say, sorry, knife, um, let's see what this binary does. Hmm, that, wow, that's uh, quite a bit of information here. Let's try and find out more about this binary. So how exactly do we go, uh, you know, about doing that? So we can search for a site called uh, GTFO bins, right? And uh, that's GTFO bins.github.io. All right, so let me explain something here. If you've never heard of this resource, um, GTFO bins is a curated list of Unix binaries. Uh, that can be used to bypass local security restrictions uh, in misconfigured systems. All right, so uh, it's again, as it says, it's important to note that this is not a list of exploits and the program listed, uh, the programs listed here are not vulnerable per se, rather GTFO bins is a compendium about how to live off the land when you only have certain binaries available, right? So you're essentially just taking advantage of misconfiguration. So if we search for the knife binary, uh, again, there we are, we can see it's the first one. So we click on knife. Uh, so you can see that it doesn't give us much information about it, but uh, we can search for it and let's see what it's, uh, it's actually used to do because let's see. All right, so there we are, knife. Um, that's under docs.chef.io, right? So let's see what this does. Um, so knife is a command line tool that provides an interface between a local chef repo and the chef infra server. So again, it's used to manage uh, infrastructure like nodes, cookbooks and recipes. Uh, let's see what else it does. Also some, uh, I think it actually allows you to um, work with a few other services, um, which we actually saw there. But yeah, we get an idea of what it does. Um, so again, GTFO essentially hosts uh, or actually lists out binaries and how they can be exploited, right? So it says right over here that um, knife um, 
if we if we use the shell you can see it can be used to break uh, out from restricted environments by spawning an interactive system shell so uh, again if you're working within a restricted environment with no with no job control you can actually use knife to give you a bash or a shell session similar to what you do with python right so whenever you uh, you know get a reverse shell and you don't have an interactive environment and you want to spawn a um a bash session you will use python and that's exactly what's happening here uh, except if knife is installed on the target you can also get a bash session with knife uh, and for sudo if the binary is allowed to be run uh, as super user by sudo it uh, it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system uh, or escalate or maintain privileged access so what that means is we can get uh, an elevated bash session uh you know by running it or running this particular command uh, and because we we can run it uh with uh, root privileges as it said within uh lin enum uh that means we can get a root privileges almost immediately so again if we uh if we just scroll to the top here so that i can just highlight that again where it actually displayed that uh there we are we can sudo without supplying a password so we can actually run uh, the knife binary without uh, with sudo privileges without providing the root password so or you know providing an administrative password so if we run that so we say sudo knife exec uh, e exec bin sh or just bin bash uh, but we can actually uh, just run it like so um, and if we type in id there we are we have root so if i can get a bash session really easily and uh, again there we are we get a bash session again id who am i uh, we are root and now if i head over into the root directory uh, list out the files there cat root.txt and we get the root flag so yeah that was fairly simple again i wanted to uh, introduce you to gtfo uh, bins again it's a very very helpful use for, uh, very very helpful resource uh, whenever you're trying to again uh, you know elevate your privileges break out of uh, a non-interactive session or reverse shell so you can see there does uh, quite a few interesting categories based on you know the actual functionality or the binaries that can be used to provide you with the functionality so for example non-interactive um, or let's look at something more interesting um uh, let's see if we talk about suid binaries it'll provide you with a list of binaries that uh, again if you for example let me just click on bash here well uh, let's look for an in interesting one here like uh, for example cat right um, so again if the binary has the suid bit set it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be, ab may be used to abuse the file system or escalate or maintain privileged access as a suid backdoor it is uh, if it is used to run the shp omit the p argument on systems like debian etc etc and then it provides you with access as to how you can do that so again it's a very very helpful resource i definitely recommend checking it out and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. This box was fairly simple, but again, enumeration, as you've seen, is key. And understanding how certain binaries can be exploited is also very, very interesting. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Uh, you can also join us on Discord. We have a Discord server. The link will be in the description section. Uh, you can join in, uh, you know, uh, essentially the discussions or the channels for Hack the Box or Try Hack Me. And uh, if you have any issues or you'd like to contribute, you can do that there. And uh, we, al we always have great discussions regarding, uh, you know, various techniques that can be used to exploit, uh, you know, that can be used for exploitation, enumeration and privilege escalation. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.